In addition to 13 fully parametric individual towers, each of our building's libraries also comes with an all-in-one preset that's designed to quickly and efficiently fill large areas. In this short tutorial, we'll take a look at how it works. First of all, create a new Rail clone object and open the library browser. Select and load the all-in-one preset. To edit this object, all the settings can be found in the parameters and the base object's rollouts. The number and the layout of buildings can be defined in two ways. You can either use an X and a Y size to create a rectangular grid of buildings, or you can use a spline should you need a layout that follows a straight or a curved path. For example, to create a grid of 49 buildings, just enter a value of 7 for the X size and the Y size parameters. Now depending on your PC, you may need to wait a little while for this to compute. It's doing some heavy duty work, so be patient when you create very large areas. But after a while, there we have it, a 7x7 grid of randomised buildings. Remember that in the viewports, RailClone displays boxes for speed, but hit render and you'll see the full geometry. So that worked well, but what if we have a curved street? Well in that case, you can use a spline. To illustrate, I'll draw a new spline in the scene with just a few curves. Then select a rail clone object and go to the base objects rollout. Click on the object picker button and select the spline from the scene. A grid is created using the spline to define the path of the X axis. You should now go to parameters Y size to determine how many buildings deep the array should be. You can also restrict the buildings to use only parts of the spline using material IDs. Just assign a material ID to a spline segment and then enter the same value in the limit material ID setting. A value zero, which is the default, removes any limitations. To control the distance between buildings, you use the spacing property. One unit is about the size of a single building. For example, we can decrease this slightly to create a more densely packed distribution. So that's the size and the spacing, but what about the height and the types of buildings? The style of architecture in these collections is broadly divided into three categories. Offices, residential and mixed use. The preset allows you to control which percentage of each are scattered, as well as controlling the random height of each category. To do this, you use the three percentage parameters to control the probability. These values are normalised, so there's no need to ensure they add up to 100%. For the heights, it's as simple as setting a minimum and a maximum size to set a range for each type of architecture. So moving down the list, the next parameter is called Roof Props Density. Increasing this value will add clutter to the roof that will make aerial renders look better. If you can't see the roofs, we recommend leaving this at zero, as it does take a little while to calculate, but it can make a big difference for high altitude views. We find a value of 30% tends to work well. Next we have the material settings. Here you have three modes. Mode 1 is fully randomised, which will give you a huge amount of variety and help to disguise repetition. Mode 2 uses preset values that we know work well. And the final value fixes all the building material IDs between 1 and 5 to allow you to assign your own custom materials, but be aware that this will be the same custom material for all buildings. Finally, you have the option to enable or disable the self-illuminated interior lights. These are enabled by default and add some really nice realism to night or dusk shots and the shadow side of buildings in daylight shots. And that's pretty much all there is to it. As you can see, this preset is great for quickly adding lots of buildings. If you need more individual control, Remember that each background building library contains 13 individual parametric presets that allow you to use your own custom footprints and layouts.